holds true here in D.C. The maturation of a young nucleus, combined with big-time off-season acquisitions and a veteran presence, have raised the bar for the Nets. Baseball's back. The first of 162 begins right now on Mass in HD. And here we go with 2011, a very good ball club. The Atlanta Braves are in town to open up the season. Opening week on Masson, presented by Subway. Fitting lead, they're coming from the Navy Art Station down into the center field plaza here at Nationals Park. A big crowd on hand, and welcome to Baseball 2011. And welcome to F.P. Santangelo. Good to have you with us, buddy. Great to be here. Now, this is the best day of the year for a baseball fan. Except for maybe game one of the World Series, if you make it that far. So there are some butterflies, even with the veteran guys down there, right? Yeah, whether you're Matt Stairs and it's your 19th opening day, or you're Pudge Rodriguez and it's your 20th opening day, or whether you're a first-year Major League broadcaster, everybody's excited about the game today. And uh, it's opening day. It's the greatest day of the year. What else can you say? So it's not the most beautiful day from a weather standpoint. The guys are out there. Hopefully it stays dry. And some changes on this ball club. New position players at some really key spots on the field. Yeah, and I think the biggest change you're going to see is Rick Ankeel in center field, the way he's going to change the game defensively. One of the best arms in the National League. A lot of times last year you saw runners against the Nationals go first to third or just score at will from second base. Rick Ankeel with his arm is going to make a huge difference in center field. And I love the veteran presence on the bench because the benches in Washington have been young in recent years. Jason Worth, the centerpiece. Can he carry the ball club, or does he even have to? Well, I, I think the luxury he has is he has that seven-year deal. He doesn't have to feel the pressure of putting up numbers. He has to do whatever it takes on a daily basis to help his team win. He's got the jewelry to prove that he's a winner. So he's been a great influence so far just in spring training with this ball club. Wouldn't be opening day without Levon Hernandez on the mound. He's faced the Braves a lot in his career. Hey, he's faced everybody a lot in his career. The Nats beat the Braves ten times last year. Six out of nine in this ballpark. Oh, Opening day, first pitch is straight ahead. On Masson, brought to you by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, and by Navy Federal Credit Union. A loan from Navy Federal Credit Union makes car buying easy. Visit NavyFederal.org to calculate your payments. 
Well, the fans are coming on in. It's going to be a sellout here at Nationals Park today. A lot of excitement about opening day in the 2011 season and a very worthy opponent to face Levon Hernandez, who will make his ninth opening day start. And by the way, if you're into a little history, and all of us here in Washington are, this is the 78th home opener in the history of this city with the Senators, of course, and the Nationals. Here's the Braves lineup. Martin Prado had a great year. Nate McLeod did not last year. Chippers back healthy. McCann's an all-star. Dan Ugla, the former Marlin. And here's Jason Hayward, one of the best rookies in baseball last year. Throw in Alex Gonzalez and rookie Freddie Freeman. And this is one of the best lineups in the National League. And I think the Braves are going to give the Phillies a serious challenge this year. 33rd career start, FP, for Levon against the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, like you said, Bob, his ninth opening day as time. His last one was in 2008 when he was with Minnesota. He went seven strong innings. What are the Braves going to get today? Slow, slower, and slowest. I'll guarantee if you go out there right now and you take Levon Hernandez's pulse, it's the slowest pulse in the building. <laughs> We're all excited. He's not phased by anything. And defense behind LeVon Hernandez today for the Nationals. Morse, Ankiel, and Worth in the outfield. Desmond and Zimmerman on the left side. Espinosa and LaRoche on the right side. And his 20th opening day start, Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. Hard to stop a train. Not very windy, that's fortunate because it is cold. Very muggy, but 42 degrees for the home opener here in our nation's capital. The crew chief behind the plate, Tim Welke. On the base is Jim Reynolds, Mike Demuro, and Andy Fletcher. There's been some changes in the umpiring situation this year with the umpires reporting now to Joe Torrey. That'll be interesting to watch as the years go by. And the games go by this year because things got a little dicey and interesting at times last year. Jason Worth patrolling his new home in right field here. And, of course, over on that right side is Adam LaRoche, who will save the Nats infielders a number of errors this year. Just great shots at these guys' faces right now. You can tell they're intense. They're excited. A lot different looks than they had in Vieira Beach in Florida right now. Andy Espinosa has to be churning right now. Didn't make it to the big club until September. And stepping in to lead it off, Martin Prado, who led the National League batting race for a good portion of last year. First pitch at 111 on opening day is a strike. Prado hit 307 last year. He was a lot higher than that for the first three or four months of the season. Leadoff man who's got some pop, and there's a breaking ball high in the zone 0 and 2. Jim Riggleman's ball club, 69 wins. Atlanta won 91 under Bobby Cox. And of course, they have Freddie Gonzalez at the helm now. And the 0 2 from Levon. Looking to paint, it's upstairs 1 and 2. Only three other games in the National League today, two in the American League. Tigers are just underway at the Yankees, and those are the two games. That one and this one starting on opening day. Prado, McLeod, and Jones for the Braves. Freddy Gonzalez takes over a ball club that finished six behind the Phillies last year. We know all about him from the solid work he did with the Marlins. Two, two and a half swing. Levon's there. A flip to first, and a good start. A typical LeVon Hernandez right there getting ahead in the count. He's got three different kind of curveballs, one that he throws sort of hard, and the, the slow one with two strikes. This is a slow variety right here, and you see Prado couldn't hold up. You see a lot of funky swings today from the Braves hitters off LeVon Hernandez if he's going good. Next up is Nate McClough. Solid player who had some good years in Pittsburgh. And then he had a nightmare for the Braves last year, hitting a buck 90. They sent him down to AAA for more than a month to get things straightened out. Hopefully a fresh start for him. That 190 brought his career batting average down to 252 last year. He can hit 270, 280. 
Levon with a fastball popped in the left. In comes Michael Morse. Two outs. Ballpark has a new capacity this year, 41,506. And this is already the fourth year for us here at Nationals Park. Hard to believe it was three years ago when Ryan Zimmerman hit that homer off Peter Moylan to open this place with a bang in 08. Here's Chipper. Target away on the first pitch. And FP, you had a chance to visit with him down in Florida. How's he feeling, and is he ready for a big year? Yeah, he's ready for a big year. Said his knees 100%. It doesn't affect him on either side of the plate, strong as he's ever been. Outside, 2-0. and Really big for LeVon Hernandez to have a good tempo today to pound that strike zone. When you're playing in a cold weather day, whether it's opening day or, you know, day early in the season, you want to keep your defense off the field. Oh, look at that. Is it, I guess LeVon can throw a changeup. Schiffer way out ahead of that. He did right there off his 83 mile an hour fastball, turning over a 70 mile an hour changeup. <laughs> he likes to go to that big looping curveball with two strikes. Let's see what he does. Last time Levon started opening day was the Twins against the Angels back in 08. He has started for the Nationals a couple of times at Philly in 05, at the Mets in 06. And there are his numbers. And of course, on home opening day in 05, he beat the Arizona Diamondbacks over at RFK Stadium to get the Nationals off to a new start there. Two and two to Chipper. He played only 95 games last year. Braves last year were sixth in the league in hitting, fifth in runs, 11th in homers. I think Jason Hayward and Dan Ugla will take care of some of that as Hayward plays his second year and Ugla comes over from Florida. They don't run much. They were bottom three in steals last year. Chipper laces one to right field. Jason Worth over to get it and Chipper Jones is going to try for two. I guess the knee's feeling better. And what's the best way to get loose on a cold day? Slap a double your first at bat of the season. LeVon Hernandez tried to go with the front door 3 2 sinker to Chipper Jones. Looking for the ball in, slaps it down the line. A good job by Jason Worth getting over this baseball, but a little bit of rain this morning. The field's a little bit damp. You, you wonder if that ball was wet. That'll bring up Brian McCann, who's been the best hitting catcher, uh, catcher in baseball now over the last five years. The middle, and that'll put Atlanta on the board. McCann drove in 77 last year, and the Braves have a run in the first inning of the season. He got to leave on early in the count. And yeah, Brian McCann not waiting around for anything. Saw Chipper Jones with a two out double. Guys that drive in runs stay back and go up the middle. Brian McCann with a good piece of hitting right there. A two out RBI starts the season out with a knock and a stake. Former teammates there, McCann and LaRoche. Dan Ugla, 33 homers for the Marlins last year. He's become the premier power hitting second baseman in baseball. Robinson Cano of the Yankees, of course, very, very good himself. Maybe the two best hitters and productive hitters at that position in the major leagues. And Ugla had a pretty good season last year, hitting 287. Doesn't always hit for average that high. And he's always the threat to hit a mistake ahead in the count 2 0 here. I mean, this lineup for the Braves just keeps coming at you. Two, two outs, nobody on. A double by Jones, a single by the can. Now you got to face Ugla. With Hayward on deck. This is a dangerous count. And Levon does a good job of keeping the ball away from the middle of the plate. Last year's Rookie of the Year candidate, Jason Hayward, is next. Yeah, Levon Hernandez is a veteran pitcher. He's not just going to lay it in there 2 0 right down the middle. Takes a little off, gets a strike. Still a dangerous count. And Ugla pops one to right center. Chasing it and Keel. He's got the call. He's got the ball. And the top of the first is over with a brave scoring. 
Ian Desmond's going to be a leadoff hitter when we come back to Nats Park. It's going to be a challenge for Ian as the leadoff guy to get on base enough. LaRoche, Morse, and Keel, Espinosa, Pudge, and Levon on our starting lineup packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Facing Derek Lowe, only 8 and 7 career against the Montreal Washington franchise, and not that good against Washington alone. Yeah, he's got a sinker, curve, cutter, change. Really turned it on at the end of the last season. Found the feel for his slider. That was his best pitch down the stretch in September. Ian Desmond hit 269 as a rookie after hitting 280 in September the year before, but his on base percentage right around the 309 310 mark. And you're hoping for more than that. This will be an interesting experiment. A couple of fastballs, and it's 101. I think a guy like Ian Desmond is suited for this very intelligent player, mature beyond his years. Jim Nickelman asked him to lead off. He got a breaking ball and hits it out of play right field corner. Desmond does have some of the speed you're looking for in a leadoff man. He stole 17 bases. He's good from first to third and second to home. Pretty good spring training. Didn't have to play every day either. He kind of liked that. Oh, that's on the inside corner. Looked like a cutter from Lowe. And Desmond caught looking. A defense for the Braves today behind Derek Lowe. Prado, McLeod, and Hayward in the outfield. Gonzalez and Jones on the left side. Ugla and Freeman on the right side. And Brian McCann's doing the catching. Big ovation for Jason Worth. They'll set up right in front of all-star catcher Brian McCann, who won that game for the National League last summer. So here we go with Jason Worth, who hit 296 for the Phillies last year. 27 home runs, drove in 85. There's that hard sinking fastball. Derek Lowe got some of those up a bit last year, and he gave up an uncharacteristic 18 home runs. Working both sides of the plate. I mean, you're talking about getting the ball up if you're a Nationals hitter today you're facing a sinker ball like low you're looking for the ball up you're not looking for a pitch you're just looking for a location make the ball be up in the strike zone and let it rip something starts about waist high you know it's going to dive down you know it's a sinker you know it's a slider it's going to be low in the strike zone look for something above your belt the sinker ball guys if Derek Lowe's getting ground balls he's on his game Worth got jammed and fights it off Nets have a new third base coach over there, by the way, in case you didn't catch that in spring training. He's a former Florida guy who worked for Freddie Gonzalez, and that's Bo Porter. Describing himself to me two weeks ago as a very aggressive, by nature, person. And he'll choose his situations 
But I think you'll see a little more motoring around third by base runners this year. And of course, Dan Radison still over at first. 2 2 pitch. Worth up the middle. That's a base hit in his Nationals debut. Big guys hit those ground balls hard enough that nobody can reach them. And that's got to feel so good for Jason Worth on first base right now. Signed a huge contract in the offseason. You come up, the first hit is the hardest one to get all season. You just want to check that box immediately if you can in your first at bat. Great job of just taking the sinker right back up the middle. Not trying to do too much. Staying on the baseball. A lot of times you fall into the trap against Derek Lowe. You try to do too much with that sinker. Nice at bat by Jason Worth. That Exmo replay showed how quiet he was. Very few moving parts on that swing. Here's Zimmerman, and Worth has been known to do some running as well. I mean, this is just what Jim Riggleman wanted. He wanted Worth to hit in the first inning, be on base for Ryan Zimmerman, so that Zimmerman could come up with runners on. So Derek Lowe throwing in the high 80s here on a very cold day. Pitchers will tell you. That if the ball can come out of their hand okay on a day like this, they do have the advantage. But sometimes getting loose and staying loose is an issue, and the feel of the ball is an issue. It's not a guaranteed FP that cold days are good for pitchers and not for hitters. You don't want to get jammed on a day like this, but they will tell you the ball just doesn't come out of your hand the same on a day like this. Way inside. Well, what the pitchers both have working in their favor today is there's moisture in the air, a lot of rain this morning, a little bit of drizzle. You just hate to go out there on the mountain those cold, dry days with the wind blowing. You can't feel the baseball. So although it's cold today, they'll have a good feel for it. Look at that career percentage. That's in Montreal. They used to say that's Tim Raines like 88 percent. Zimmerman with a base hit. Worth is going to make the turn and go to third. The throw is cut off. It's a corner situation for the Nats. I like the aggressiveness of the base runner forcing the action early. And you're going to see that a lot from Jason Worth. They emphasize this in spring training this year. Be aggressive on the bases. Don't be afraid to get thrown out. Don't be afraid to go first or third. And what do you see right out of the gate in the bottom of the first? Ryan Zimmerman hitting behind Jason Worth, allowing him to go to third. And, you know, if Jim Riggleman could have drawn it up any better. You know, Worth on, Zimmerman hit it behind him first and third. One out. Too early in the game or the season for that matter to play in. So they're at double play depth with Adam LaRoche sniffing a great RBI opportunity here. He drove in a hundred for Arizona last season. And this is where if you're LaRoche, you're looking for something up in the strike zone. You're thinking about going back up the middle, getting a ball that you can lift into the outfield. And so Derek Lowe putting one into the dirt, 2-0. and oh. LaRoche, look at that, 306. His batting average for the Diamondbacks last year was just 261. But when a guy hits 261 and drives in 100, you know he got his hits at the right times. Looking for something to at least lift out of the infield. And the count's two and one. A veteran hitter like LaRoche up in this situation. He knows that Derek Lowe wants him to get the ball on the ground. He's looking for a double play to get out of the inning. But he also knows that if he's going to drive in this run, he has to find something up in the strike zone. Let the pitch take care of itself. Get in trouble in these situations. You try to lift a sinker. Look for something up in the zone. Stay up the middle. One, two, and one, a swing and a foul tip. There's a ball turning over, missing. A couple of balls outside. And a 2 2 situation now. Target up and away. Ooh, he didn't miss by much. That was similar to the location on which Tim Welke called out Desmond, the right-handed batter. Big right-handed batter on deck. We'll see if Jim Riggleman does something with the runner at first base Zimmerman here. He's holding. And LaRoche will pop it up right side. Short right field for Ugla. Two outs.
He got a pitch up in the strike zone. A little changeup action from Derek Lowe. 84 mile an hour changeup up in the strike zone. Got LaRoche out in front just a little bit, just enough for him to pop it up. Yeah, you can tell by LaRoche's the slumping of the shoulders at B and the position in the hands there. That little changeup took all the steam out of his bat. Great pitch. Veteran pitch. It's up to Michael Morse now. And folks, I know you heard us on five spring training telecasts with FP saying they don't print your spring training stats on the back of your baseball card. Let's just hope that Michael Morse brought some of that warmth and that bat up north here. He has been nails. He could take his spring training stats to arbitration. <laughs> Interesting outfield defense against him. It indicates that the Braves with low will pitch him away as Nate McLeod is about six or seven steps toward the gap and way off the line and left is Martin Prada. One one pitch and a little chopper left side for the shortstop Alex Gonzalez low throw dug out by the rookie Freddie Freeman. The Nats get a couple of hits and they strand two. Braves with a run in the top of the first, and Washington thwarted right here. in HD from Nationals Park. 1-0 Atlanta. The Luna double is back. And we're going to look at National League doubles leaders. Jason Wirth is on that list with some really, really good hitters. Call Luna for up to 70% off all flooring. 877-241-LUNA. Shop smart. Shop Luna. Here's Jason Hayward. A guy with extra base hit power. Hayward last year had 29 doubles for the Braves here at Nationals Park. It's the season opener, top of the second. Debbie Taylor's in the house. F.P. Santangelo, Bob Carpenter, great having you with us. Fastball rides high, 1 1. That's a pretty good rookie season. I think the Braves figured about a year ago they could put this guy in right field and then forget about it for the next 12 to 15 years. Yeah, just an amazing young talent. Had a great rookie season. Yeah, look at the numbers right there. Hitting seventh in the lineup today. <laughs> He'd be hitting third or fourth in most lineups, but the Braves are stacked. Yeah, they are. They've got a good power hitting rookie, Freddie Freeman, who's hitting eighth. Hayward will jack one toward the scoreboard, and it's not coming back. Two nothing Atlanta. Levon's been falling behind some of these power hitters. And the Braves, who hit 139 homers last year, have their first. Yeah, if Levon falls behind, it's not the end of the world. He just got to get the ball down the strike zone. You see right there a location mistake, a 2 1 pitch up in the zone. And Jason Hayward does as good a job as anybody getting on top of a high pitch. A little backspin piece right there for its first home run of the year. Right into the first row. But even at that, there's nothing cheap about home runs out there. That's a 15 foot scoreboard. He hit that ball over. 
And here's Alex Gonzalez, who, who hit 23 last year. So Hayward loves opening day. Is he going to hit one every day of his career? He hit one his first at bat last year, didn't he? Opening that? day in Atlanta. Now you have a shortstop who hit 23 homers last year and drove in 88 runs. Gonzalez, though, does strike out a lot. 259 for Toronto, 240 when he came over to the Braves. There's that super slow one. Levon has him way out ahead. And Michael Morse is under it for the first out. Here's Freddie Freeman. FP and I watched in impressed fashion in spring training and this as this guy robbed the Nats out of two or three hits one afternoon. He's only 23 from Fountain Valley California a second rounder back in 07 and he appears to be the guy they'll plug in at first base for years to come now. And Braves people rave about his defense. We saw a little pick on the ground ball by Morris to shortstop in the last inning. He'll pull it over to another great defensive first baseman. Adam LaRoche takes care of that one for the second out with Derek Lowe coming up. Expect a full season of action. It's the all-inclusive power pack ticket from the Nationals. Starting at $25 per. This season-long plan offers parking, food, and drink. Go to nationals.com slash power pack for more information and some restrictions do apply. Derek Lowe is no slouch with a bat. 142 career hitter. Levon's a little better though. 222. He will pop it up on the first pitch. Pudge with a look. And it's about six rows over the screen. We talk about Levon being a better hitter. I was walking through the clubhouse today. The tunnels and the cage are right by the dugout. At 9 o'clock this morning, Levon Hernandez is hitting the tee in the cage. <laughs> He's got a good stroke. Hits that little white ball pretty well, too. And a little chopper that Hernandez will take care of. Lead-off homer by Jason Hayward. Leading off for the Nats, a new face. Rick and Keel coming your way. Visit FCA.org. It's the association for IT pros. And here's our sideline report. Happy opening day, Debbie Taylor. Happy opening day, Bob. Danny Espinosa making his first start opening day at second base. He said there's a new culture here with the Nats. It's all about winning. And here's Danny with more. We all want to go out there and win. We're not just coming here to show up, get a paycheck, and just play we want to win there's guys in this team that have won World Series and they want to win so I think with them bringing that attitude and that experience of winning to our organization there could be a lot a lot of good here 
Danny told me, too, for him personally, it's all about consistency, the same with the team as a whole. And he said the main thing is everybody is on the same page, and that's a great way to start the season. Bob, FP. Here's Rick Ankiel, who has been in the playoffs before as a pitcher and as a position player. 31-year-old outfielder starting opening day in center field for the Nationals. Who would have thought that a month and a half ago? And a foul tip on a pitch up. It's two and one. He was hacking ahead in the count. He's an aggressive hitter. 248 career. And had one big home run season in St. Louis. He will slap one to right field. Watching it as Hayward and catching it as Hayward right in front of the scoreboard. On a day like this, the air is quite heavy. Ball doesn't carry like it will later. Yeah, that ball was hit well. And he, you know, he got it out in front right there, keeping his head down. And when it's cold, the ball doesn't carry. It's damp and cold, so you got the humidity and the cold double whammy. But when he hit that ball originally, I thought it was out of here. Good off the bat. Of course, uh, FP, got to remember, we're about 10 stories up. Everything looks like a whole run <laughs> off the bat up here. Here's Danny Espinosa. Who came up here in September and he didn't fool us with any fly balls. He had six home runs in 28 games and drove in 15. His offense is going to be nice when it comes. His real everyday value to this ball club will be up the middle defense with Ian Desmond. He'll slap it to left. It's going foul. Strike two. You see the late movement on the low sinker. When you go up there, you're looking for a ball middle, middle. Almost has split finger action on it where it's diving away from a lefty. And Danny Espinosa, all systems go right there. I'll tell you what, your first start, your first opening day start as a major leaguer, it's hard to go up there and be patient. When you're nervous as a baseball player, you're nervous as a hitter, you just want to go up there and swing. You want to get the at-bat over with whether you're standing on second, back in the dugout. You're so amped up, you want to swing at everything. His first homer in this ballpark was batting left-handed to the opposite field. The race is on. There he goes. Base hit for Danny Espinosa. Very difficult play for a catcher trying to pick it up with the bare hand while setting your feet around to throw to first. Yeah, Danny Espinosa will definitely take this one. Get that first knock out of the way. You go up there maybe a little more relaxed next time. You don't care what they look like once the bell rings. Just a good pitch from low, running out off the plate. Hit the ball right into the dirt. Got a little balada action. Swing and bunt, base knock. One for one. Looks like low and McCann kind of got in each other's way. I thought it was the catcher's play. And here's Pudge coming off the Nets debut season when he hit 266 last year. One RBI short of 50. Yeah, look at the, the swinging bunt from Danny Espinosa right here. McCann out quickly. That's and it looked play. like Derek Lowe raised his hand, so maybe by raising his hand, he actually said, I got it. McCann balked a little bit. It was just enough for the speedy Espinosa to get to first base. Big breaking ball tailing away. First, 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 first. Games, hits, runs, doubles, and 13 gold gloves. Amazing career. Espinosa is a running threat. Amazing career for Pudge. You saw the numbers. His 20th opening day. I mean, we're talking to the guys before the game. I mean, they're all amped for this. It doesn't matter if it's your first opening day like Danny Espinosa on first base, your 20th. Like Pudge in the batter's box, they're all excited. You know, Danny Espinosa hitting in front of Pudge is an interesting thing in this lineup because Pudge was one of the league leaders last year of hitting into double plays. There's a ton of hitting room on the right side. There may be times when Jim Riggleman turns him loose with Pudge at the plate to stay out of that 6 4 3. Like right now right. on a bounce at a chipper. Tough play for him. That was not a double play ball, but the thought was there, and Riggleman did start the runner. 
That's a good point you made, Bob. You can start the runner when you have a good hitting pitcher like Levon Hernandez hitting a nine hole. Maybe if you got a pitcher that's not so efficient with a bat like Hernandez, you play station to station right there. But the Nats have been aggressive in spring training. They said they were going to be aggressive on the bases all season. And now you got a guy, as you mentioned, Bob, a very good hitting pitcher, a chance to drive in a run and help yourself out. You know, Levon's a member of the 10 100 club. 10 career home runs, 108 sacrifice bunts. I think I'm in that club, too. <laughs> career batting average of 222. And he's driven in 78 career runs. Let's see if that T work this morning, the cage at 9 o'clock pays off. Levon was very, very happy last year when he got that 100th sacrifice bunt. That was that was big to him. Didn't like to call him the fastball. I'm sure he'll say to Tim Wilkie, give me that one. Yeah, I'll take that pitch. Ian Desmond if the inning continues. We've got the kinetic pitch track going again this year. And Levon was right. That was not a strike. Kinetic North America. Providing world class technology to our national and homeland security customers. Low takes care of Levon. Two innings in the scorebook here along the banks of the Anacostia. 2 0 Atlanta. Today, including Brian Mitchell, Michael Wilbon, the great Morgan Wooten, our buddy James Brown, Dominique Dawes couldn't be here today, the great gymnast. She was inducted. There's Mr. Wooten, the great coach at DeMatha in Hyattsville, Maryland, who has sent so many players out of the high school basketball ranks to Division I and then on to the NBA. We have a wonderful Hall of Fame here and deserving inductees today here on opening day. And of course, our old friend Charlie Brotman was down on the field to handle all the ceremonies. Top of the third, here's Levon against Martin Prado. Prado bounced back to the pitcher, first time up. 27-year-old veteran of Maracay, Venezuela. Signed with the Braves as a 17-year-old 10 years ago. And now he's an outfielder. They had him play in third base last year when Chipper got hurt. He was a middle infielder before that. Levon paints the target away set by Pudge. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, Prado doesn't care where you put him. He just wants to contribute offensively. Did a great job at third base last year. We watched him in spring train left field. Rob a few hits. Half glove will travel. Now the target's further out there. Two and two. By the way, the Tigers have a run early at the Yankees. 1-0. That's Verlander and Sabathia. The only other game in progress on opening day. I like the looks of those Tigers when we saw them down in Florida. Yeah, that one run might be enough. <laughs> what we saw from Justin Verlander down in Florida, he was amazing. We won 18 games last year. CC won 21.
Three two to the leadoff hitter here in the third. And Levon challenges him gets a pop up out to right center for Jason Worth. They expect a great weekend as we get the season going. The Braves will be here Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's a 105 game. First 20,000 fans receive a schedule for the year. And it's combined, of course, with that car magnet presented by Exxon Mobil. And then Sunday is a 135. For tickets, go to nationals.com slash opening. John Lennon, Tommy Hansen Saturday. Jordan Zimmerman in a dandy pitching matchup with Tim Hudson Sunday. And I asked some of the Atlanta people today, why is Tim Hudson not pitching opening day? They have him going third so that he will pitch their home opener in over a week from now. A week from tomorrow, actually. Because Tim Hudson has really been tough on the Nats in the past. Here's Nate McLeod who flied to left his first time. Good location one and two leave on getting that inside corner. He loves that swing back fastball. Yeah he'll do the Greg Maddox throw it at your front hip if you're left handed run it back across the plate. And the key to that pitch and the key to Levon is just keeping the ball down in the strike zone. If he could be down all day long and be consistent in the lower half of the strike zone. He'll keep him right there. And he goes soft and strikes him out looking with the breaking ball. High 60s on the gun two outs. Yeah, you can just turn off the gun when Levon's pitching. I mean, he's been around for so long because he knows what he's doing. You look at the one-two backdoor curveball right there. Great job by Pudge of framing it. You see him reach out right there and stick that baseball. A lot of times a young catcher will let that ball get too deep. It'll look like it's outside of the umpire. Pudge reaching out, framing it. Great job getting the call third. And here's Chipper who started their two-out rally in the first with a double down the right field line. Last year, Chipper doesn't go to second on that ball. And he would not have scored on the ensuing single by Brian McCann. So he's feeling well. Kind of an odd thing about Chipper Jones since he won a batting championship hitting 364 in 08. He's hit just 265 over the last two seasons. Has spent part of that time unhealthy. In franchise history, only Chipper and the great Hank Aaron have 2,500 hits and 1,500 RBIs. You win a batting title, you're on base a lot. It takes a lot out of your legs. And the bad knee last year. Said he's healthy this year. And the only switch hitter in that 300 400 category. Hitting 300 as a switch hitter is hard to do. That ball drilled to left center. Michael Morse waiting for it. And Levon gets his first 1 2 3. Top of the order Desmond Worth and Zimmerman straight ahead.
That's extra today. We debut the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report. Tom Davis, Phil Wood, Dave Johnson, and Mel Antonin, our panel of experts. They'll take a closer look at the new look Nats and look ahead to their competition in the National League East. I saw Dave Johnson here at Nats Fest yesterday. I said, what are you doing in our ballpark, you Oriole? He was hanging out, getting to know some of the guys. And we're looking forward to that show. It'll be great. Desmond looking on strikes first time. He's an aggressive hitter. He won't let that happen again. Ian is 25 years of age as we start the season. Won't have a birthday till September 20th. He and Chelsea are expecting their first baby in just over a month. So our best to that sweet girl and hope all is going well with the Desmonds. Jason Worth batting a thousand is an ad. So Zimmerman right behind him. That's uh, a big breaking ball, and Derek Lowe eats him alive. Four low, two Ks, both against Ian. The first time up, Ian Desmond got the front door variety of this pitch right here. Threw it right at him for a called third strike, and that time he just starts it out over the middle of the plate and lets it run away. Good pitch by Derek Lowe. Next up, Jason Worth. He worked a long count and then hit a hard bouncing ball for a base hit up the middle. They give him left center and the left field line here. Lowe's been working the right handers away. That's a fast ball up in the zone. But we see a lot of ball clubs in this ballpark play their left fielder almost on a line from home plate to the middle of the bullpen. Josh Willingham used to play farther off the line than that. Be interesting to see where Jim Riggleman puts Michael Morse against various hitters out there this year. The feeling is in this ballpark, down the line, it's going to be a double anyway. It's something in the gap. You can keep it from being a triple. Two and two. And if you're Jason Morse, you look out there and you see how the defense is set, and it gives you a little heads up to how they're going to pitch you on a given day. You see Nate McLeod way over in right center field. You know they're going to work you away. Two two pitch. When Derek Lowe is at his best, he's throwing the sinker for at least a few called strikes, and he's got the good sharp breaking ball. Right now, he appears to have one of those two things. He hasn't thrown the sinker for strikes that much, but his breaking ball has really been tough. And he'll go inside on Worth to strike him out. Base is empty for Zimmerman. Anyway, Derek Lowe is really on. His sinker appears to be a strike. All the way until it gets to the glove. I mean, you look right there. That was more of a runner. He's got a runner and a sinker. The sinker goes straight down and into a righty. The runner will just kind of take off and tail at the last minute. And that ball started over the inner third of the plate, ran off the plate with a lot of late movement. And FP, you might have noticed Jason Worth did swing under that ball. So you're thinking sinker, sinker, everything low. Then he throws one sideways above your bat. But Worth was swinging to where the rest of the sinkers ended up during that at bat, which were right. down and in, and that one just kind of stayed in the same plane. They play Zimmerman the same way. Ryan is at his absolute best when he's hitting the ball from the 377 mark out beyond the yellow sign there and left, all the way over to the curly W on the scoreboard. When he goes up the middle, he can be devastating. Counts in his favor, two and one. Man, tremendous amount of pop the other way. I was really impressed down in spring training watching him hit some bolts to right center field to right field. The ultimate display of power for a hitter is how they hit the ball the other way. For him to just leave at will to right field in spring training showed me he's got tons of pop that way. Two one. He served early notice in this ballpark three years ago. The walk off homer he hit against Peter Moylan was right over the Nationals, right over the S of the Nationals in left center. And then he's hit a couple that have checked up about halfway up the hill. The batter's eye in dead center field. Three and two. How does he do here? He likes it. He's good everywhere. I mean, he's just a good hitter. Good hitters hit no matter what the ballpark is. 
And I got to see him play about six times a year being in San Francisco last year. And every time I watch this guy play, he seems absolutely locked in. By the way, that 291, three points above Zimmerman's career average, which did take a bump the last couple of years, hitting 292 and 09, 307 last year. Now he's won two consecutive silver sluggers, and Ryan was presented with his before the ball game today. Best betting average at his position. That's a fastball for a strike. Derek Lowe strikes out Desmond and Worth swinging. And now Zimmerman looking. 2 nothing Braves into the middle innings. Hits are even. Levon roughed up a little bit early with three hits early, settling down some. And Brian McCann got the RBI single FP. Yeah, a little two out lightning from the Braves in the first. Chipper Jones with the double and McCann with the RBI single. And you see Jason Hayward right here just totally backspinning a baseball up in his eyes. And that's what he does best getting on top of the ball, creating that backspin and went a long way. A really good four, five, six combo for the Braves here in the fourth. McCann, Ugla. And Jason Hayward. Right now they had a bit of an injury situation with Jair Jurgens coming out of spring training. But they do have some off days. They don't need a fifth starter for a couple of weeks. They've got a big three that's pretty good. That ball taken by LaRoche. There you go, folks. There's your first base defense that we will see all season long. We've been talking about it all spring training. Talked about it yesterday at Nats Fast. The difference Adam LaRoche is going to make at first base. Not so much with plays like this. We all know he can make great plays going to his right, going to his left, feeding the ball to his pitcher, but picking balls from the infielders. You know, last year, Ian Desmond with all the errors. It's such a, a luxury to have a guy like Adam LaRoche over there at first base. It's going to pick you up and save some runs on defense. You hit him a thousand balls, he'll only muff five of them. Those numbers mean. That's pretty solid. Here's Dan Ugla. Flied to center first time. And a good fastball by Levon to the outside corner. Hernandez has retired seven straight now. And eight of the last nine with only the Hayward home run. The blemish. That's a great breaking ball. When you talk about opening day and how amped everybody is, it usually takes about three innings before it turns into a baseball game. I, I think now you'll see both teams kind of settle in, do their thing. You know, the nerves take over the first couple, two, three innings. Then all of a sudden, it turns into just one of 162. You look more relaxed than you did at 111 Eastern. That was a mess. <laughs> We're glad nice. to have you, buddy. Thanks. Good to be back. <laughs> and by the way, Levon now has made opening day starts for the Marlins, three for the Giants, one for the Expos. This is his third for the Nats. And three years ago, he made one for the Twins. 
It's an amazing thing when a guy's a, an opening day starter for that many different organizations. And it hasn't always gone that well for him. But I think when you talk about the Nats staff this year, maybe minus Jordan Zimmerman, not a lot of strikeouts. They're not, they don't have strikeout stuff. So this is what you're going to see. You know, a team that gives up a few runs and a staff that gives up a few runs and hopefully keeps you in the baseball game, keeps you around. We talked about the quality starts in spring training, six innings, three runs, whatever that stat is. To me, a quality start is keeping your team in the baseball game. So if LeVon Hernandez can settle down, get over the first inning run, the Jason Hayward home run, and keep the Braves, right at two runs. He'll keep his team in the baseball game. And you see the slowest variety of the curveball right there. Just a 12-6 bender that not a lot of guys can stay back on. Safe to say a fastball hitter doesn't like that pitch. And here's Jason Hayward who hit one about 375 to right field first time. One row into the seats to give the Braves their present 2 nothing lead. With fastball up and in for a strike. We talked to some Braves people today. Jason Hayward last year was really striding toward the plate, kind of cutting himself off. This year he's really worked on his feet, striding right back toward the pitcher. You saw the results in his first at bat. Pudge wanted the ball up and in, and Levon gave it to him right there. Strike two. And Hayward, a lot of his pop, a lot of his strength last year was the other way. He had a lot of home runs to left center field. The first one this year to right. And you see he's more lined up to the pitcher, a little more open, allowed him to see the baseball longer, not cut himself off. They're going to jam him again. They don't want this guy getting those arms out. You just got to be careful when you go with two strikes. You got to get it in there off the plate. And a lot of times pitchers, they try to go in with two strikes. They leave it out over the plate a little bit. A guy like Jason Hayter, as we saw the first time up, can do some damage. One ball and two strikes. Bases empty, two outs, top of the fourth. Target in again. Levon was walking off the diamond, so was Ryan Zimmerman. Ball two. I think this will show the ball was probably up and in. But, but he's been working up there pretty well. Yeah, I don't really care what the box shows right there. That's a strike. And it's a perfect pitch. He planted it in there, the front door sinker. Pudge a great job of framing it. That's too close to take. That ball is a strike. That's him. Well, he did call some other similar locations for strike one and two here. That's a case where the pitch was very, very close, but it was the other side of the plate from where Pudge was set up. He tried to backdoor the big slow curve ball. That ball was outside. Pudge trying to frame it. 3 2 now. He goes soft and strikes him out. <laughs> what an inning for Levon Hernandez. Just taking the bat out of Ugla and Hayward's hands with those big old marshmallows.
Having a veteran guy behind the plate like Pudge Rodriguez and a, maybe a young guy like Wilson Ramos in the dugout. And Pudge turning right there to Tim Welke after the at-bat saying, where was that sinker earlier in the count? Do you think that pitch was close? You see Tim Wilke nod his head and say, yeah, that pitch was close. You're kind of reading his lips during the break. So instead of going all crazy in the middle of the at-bat, maybe showing up the umpire, innings over, real professional veteran guy turns to the major league umpire and says, was that pitch close? Yeah. Just planting the seed maybe for next time that you get that call. Adam LaRoche popped up back in the first inning with runners at first and third and one out. That was the Nats' best scoring opportunity of the day. They've only had one scratch hit since. LaRoche, Morris, and Ankeel, four, five, and six for the Nats in the fourth. And top of handle it the right way like Pudge did right there. You also got a young kid like Wilson Ramos on the bench seeing that. You know, he's probably going to catch Saturday for the Nats. He showed him how to handle things. This ball heading foul ground left side hitting on the track. Nobody can reach it. More on Adam LaRoche. Here's Debbie. Well, Bob, Adam LaRoche and Chipper Jones, the Braves' third baseman, are very good friends. They played together, obviously, when Adam was in Atlanta. And Chipper told me today that he thinks he had a big influence on Adam signing with the Nationals. He said this is an organization that is on the upswing. It's a much improved ball club. And uh, he also said it was a big coup for the Nationals to sign Jason Worth away from the Phillies. So some important words coming from Chipper Jones to Adam LaRoche this winter. And Adam told me in Florida a couple of weeks ago it was very important for him personally to stay in the National League. The leagues are probably less different now than they've ever been before. And he'll hit that ball pretty well but caught by Prado right in front of the wall. But there still is some difference in the leagues. Obviously the DH or the no DH. And Adam's just more comfortable in the National League. Short time in Boston, only six games back in 09, but he's been a pirate, a brave, a diamondback, and now a national. How important is that to be where you're familiar? Well, it's very important, and all the GMs and owners can call you all winner, and sometimes it doesn't really make a difference. You talk to players, word of mouth, guys say, hey, this organization's on the rise, or I play here and it's a great place to play. That is priceless. So when you have a guy like Chipper Jones saying, hey, you, know, you should try D.C., that's a good place. These guys are getting it. They're heading in the right direction. That means everything to a player. Here's Morse. Michael hits one hard foul. Okay, I'm curious about something. You call a guy over the winter, and maybe his experience with an organization hasn't been that good. What might he tell you to stay away from? I mean, you know, what constitutes a bad report? on a certain team. You know, if a guy doesn't like where he's playing, they'll be honest. They don't like it here. They don't take care of us. It's not a good organization. You know, it's not professional at times. And you hear that, you know, now and then as a player. You know, there's no better scouting report than a guy that's already played for a team, knows the manager, knows the general manager, knows how things are run off the field, the travel, the hotels you stay at. You know, do they treat you first class? And by all accounts, the Nationals do that, and guys are wanting to play here now. What and two to Michael. Michael Morris hitting 15 home runs last year. Very productive numbers in 98 games, 266 ABs, hitting 289. He also had an on base percentage over 350, which is real good for somebody hitting fifth or further down in the lineup. It indicates he has a good batting eye. He's an aggressive hitter, but. He struck out 64 times, not that much, walked 22, had a great spring. And by the way, the Nationals 2011 media guide refers to him, to him as the secret slugger. Oh, there's a generous strike zone today for these veteran pitchers. And Michael Morris is Derek Lowe's fifth victim. Let's have a look at the Verizon pitch track. This is a backdoor sinker from Derek Lowe. The same spot that the LeVon Hernandez pitch was called a ball. It's called a strike to Michael Morris. Rule of the air on the most advanced 4G network in the world, Verizon 4G LTE. With that pitch track, here's Rick Ankeel. I mentioned Ankeel did have one big home run and RBI season, accounting for a good chunk of his career numbers. That was an 08. 
when he hit 25 home runs in St. Louis, drove in 71. He also had 21 doubles, two triples, and played a very good center field, right field, wherever Tony La Russa would put him. Can't wait to see him display that arm on some would be base runners. I mean, I can't wait for him to display that pop. He just missed one his first time up. You yeah, watch, this, watch this guy take VP, stand behind the cage. He puts on a display in batting practice. Well, playing for the Braves, you told me he splashed one into McCovey's Cove last year in the playoffs, right? Yeah, in the NLDS, he hit one in the water where Barry Bonds used to go. Just an absolute bomb. So he's got the pop. He's got the ability. Let's put it all together. I like the move with Rick Ankeel in center field. Hard to believe a guy could make himself from a major league pitcher to a position player. Amazing. Fastball upstairs. The count's even 2-2. Two -two. By the way, the Yankees have struck for three runs. Leading the Tigers now 3-1, bottom of the third. Mark Teixeira has hit his first home run. Three and two now to Rick. Espinosa next here in the fourth, if it keeps on going. There's Danny Espinosa who hit a little bouncer down the third baseline. And an infield hit his first time. So the net hits singles from Worth, Zimmerman, and Espinosa. But seven straight now for Derek Lowe. And Keel offers. Didn't look like he swung, and he takes the two on walk. Let's have a look at our schedule, the upcoming Nats schedule. From Commuter Connections, we'll get you home, guaranteed. Braves are here for two. Day off tomorrow. DC 50 joins us for our first Sunday game. And then after an off day Monday, on to the Nationals version of the Little Shop of Horrors. Down in Florida, the ballpark where nothing ever seems to go right. Maybe this will be a new year. Be the Marlins last year in that ballpark before they go downtown Miami to their new retractable dome stadium. And none too soon as far as all of us in this traveling party are concerned. Runner going. And Keo is... Out at second. On a throw to the second base side, but Gonzalez got him with the swipe tag. Nationals lose a runner and into the fifth inning by the Navy Yard. 2 0 Braves.
Baseball game, LeVon Hernandez finally locking it in a little bit, keeping the Braves right where they are. I think we're seeing veteran pitchers settle down as the day goes on. Tim Welke has been a most accommodating veteran pitcher umpire. And the fifth inning is underway with a strike to Alex Gonzalez. LeVon has retired nine straight. Derek Lowe, eight. If you count the walk in the caught ceiling, a batter retired. Alice Gonzalez flied to left first time. Nationals play him pretty much straight away. He's a spray line drive hitter with occasional pop. Last year it was more than occasional with 23 home runs. Here comes Jason Worth, and he'll slide his way to a nice play. If Espinosa can't get there, that usually means the ball will be out far enough for the outfielder to grab it. Yeah, it's all about communication on plays like this. I talked to Ian Desmond yesterday. He said the difference between last year's ball club and this year's ball club, they're all talking to each other out there. They're moving over on pitches. They're communicating on fly balls. A lot of times last year he said it was real quiet on defense. So you see an example right there, Jason Worth. Nice positioning, good communication with Danny Espinosa. One of the great things about having young middle infielders is that Espinosa and Desmond have amazing range. There won't be too many Texas leaguers falling in between those guys in the outfield this year. Here's Freddie Freeman who bounced out to LaRoche first time. Levon work in the corner just missing 2-0. Oh. The Brewers are underway at Cincinnati. Ricky Weeks and Chris Gomez, Carlos Gomez have both hit home runs. And Milwaukee put two up in the first inning against Edinson Volquez. I drove through Ohio the other way, uh, the other day on my way to the East Coast. They are unbelievably excited about that baseball team in Cincinnati coming off their division championship. 3-0 pitches in there. Although they do have some injury problems. Johnny Cueto's hurt. So the Reds will start the season a little shorthanded in their quest to repeat. Derek Lowe on deck, 3-1 pitch. You talk about a young guy like Freddie Freeman, first year in the big leagues, hitting eighth. That's a tough assignment for a young guy. Usually when you're in the eighth hole, the pitcher hitting behind you, you're not going to get fastballs and fastball counts. You're going to get a lot of off speed. You know, today's the exception with a guy like LeVon Hernandez on the mound. He's going to throw off speed and cross you up a lot of times. But, you know, I always like younger guys hitting higher in the lineup. That, that's just a tough assignment for a young kid, knowing that they might be pitching around you to get to the pitcher. Am I aggressive right here? Do I take my walk? Do I go ahead and expand my strike zone? We'll see how he does in the eight hole. 3 2 pitch. That ball hit well to left center, and Keel is tracking it. Rick will take it at the edge of the track for the second out. Hollywood Casino with our league leaders. Action packed table games, red hot slots await. Hollywood Casino, Charlestown races, West Virginia. Levon is the active leader with Roy Halladay, Mark Burley, and CeCe starting for the Yankees today. Other notable guys starting on this first day of the season. A little later, Chris Carpenter in St. Louis against the Padres. And later on tonight, Tim Lincecum at Dodger Stadium against Clayton Kershaw. Oh and two fastball in there to Derek Lowe bounce back to Levon first time up. Yeah, I wonder if you watch Levon Hernandez get locked in if it just took him maybe a little bit longer to warm up today. He was in the bullpen for quite a while after his allotted time. Yeah, he's still he, he, when it's cold like this. Sometimes it takes your body a little bit to adjust and just get the blood flowing out there. I, I know he wasn't affected by the fact that it's opening day. I mean, this guy's pulse is the same low rate no matter if it's opening day or the seventh game of the World Series. And a bouncer right side. Danny Espinosa with the pitcher running can lay back. 12 straight for Levon. Espinosa was at the plate when Ankiel was thrown out. He'll lead off in a moment.
but it just didn't work out very well for Abe and Teddy. <laughs> Evidently, the rough rider was a rough rider. <laughs> Teddy down. I mean, come on. The first race of the year, and like two seconds after getting involved, Teddy takes a header. Come on. Saturday, 1 o'clock, game two of the series. It'll be Tommy Hansen for the Braves. First two big league seasons, 21 wins. John Lennon coming off an 8-8 eight and eight for the match last year. John has a good career record, 5-4 and four and DRA, 3.39 against Atlanta pitching. 12-30, Johnny and Ray with Nets Extra. Teddy had a tough spring training, Bob. You didn't hear about that? You know, evidently, some of those appearances he made around town did not have him race ready. Bottom five. Jim Riggleman waiting for some offense here. No runs on three hits and a walk. Espinosa has one of those three hits. That'll force Chipper to play in on the grass at third. Yeah, the Braves have a great back end of the bullpen. I mean, it's time for the Nats right now. That was Derek Lowe's 74th pitch. They've made him work out there. They just haven't been able to cash in. 73 pitches, 41 strikes through his first four innings. Levon, by the way, now has five innings. 70 pitches, 44 strikes. He's been economical lately. So at least, unless the offense really gets going, there will come a point in the later innings when Jim will have to bat for Levon, unless they can touch up Derek Lowe for a run or two here. Probably not this inning, but certainly next time around. Umpires behind home plate not happy and neither is the manager with that call. About the only thing you can tell from home plate managers will tell you would be the elevation of the pitch. 2-2. Fastball outside. Yeah, they'll usually lean on their catcher say was it in was it away but you know height they can tell from the bench and Jim Riggleman thought that one was low. 3-2 pitch. Might have been ball four. Espinosa reaching for it. Well, that kid can get down the line. He's out by a step. AT&T with trivia for you. We had a remarkable season last year getting these answers. Who combined to make up the oldest opening day battery? I mean, this is all time in baseball? That's tough. Are we allowed to answer? Yeah, they're going to help us out a lot and tell us it's since 1946. Well, did Satchel Page have an opening day start? <laughs> if Satchel started, it might not make any difference who was catching. The catcher was four. <laughs> uh, I have no idea where to even start on this one. You know, maybe, um, I don't They keep maybe, showing LeVon. How about, how, about, is, how about Jamie Moyer? Late, but he, he probably hasn't done that lately in his 40s. How about today? Well, Levon and Pudge could be candidates. The question was posed in the past tense. He noted grammatically. Pudge, by the way, grounded out to third first time up. 0 2 pitch. Pretty good looking breaking ball off the plate. He didn't bite. I'm thinking about guys like maybe Charlie Huff. I know he had some opening day starts late in his knuckleballing career. Roger Clemens pitching into his 40s. That's a foul ball. That was interesting because the play was sort of in front of the bag, but Andy Fletcher behind the bag made the call. Right there. It appeared to be foul by the time it got to Chipper. One and two to Pudge. Had to reach for the breaking ball. Probably close enough on which to be swinging with two strikes. AT&T trivia. I think they've got us. Oldest opening day battery. Is Levon part of it? Carlton Fisk and Jerry Royce for the White Sox in 89. 
I would have had that because I Googled it. The computer connection up here is just not quite fast enough. You know, if you would have said Pudge, you'd be half right because that was Carlton's nickname. There you go. Jerry Rice does not get enough credit. I think he won 200 and something like 225 games in the big leagues. Cardinals, Pirates, Dodgers, White Sox. He was a real good left-handed pitcher. O2 to Levon who bounced back to the pitcher. And of course Carlton Fisk. Pudge Rodriguez, one Pudge breaking another's numerous records for longevity behind the plate. There's Ian Desmond. Pudge Fisk, by the way, was a hitter that Tony La Russa batted second in Chicago at times. Talking about guys like Jason Worth. Batting second. Larry Walker did it when La Russa had him in St. Louis. Carney Lansford did it in Oakland. There have been power hitters batting second. For different major league teams and managers over the years. It's all about run production. Whether they drive them in or score them. Whether you want the big guys to be around 200. Whether it's RBIs or runs scored. So let's hope Jason Worth does well in the two. Hole. Breaking ball outside. Derek Lowe against right handed batters. Is just flipping that breaking ball. Near that outside corner. And letting hitters get themselves out on ground balls. Rounders are coming more frequently now. That's a fastball. Levon gone. The Nats are still scoreless after five. Two nothing Atlanta. Top of their order coming. Subway. Five nothing Braves. Top of the six coming up here at Nationals Park. Here's our game summary. It's all about power from Hayward and pitching from low, but Levon has settled down and he's retired 12 straight. Yeah, after giving up the run the first and the RBI single from Brian McCann and the home run from Jason Hayward, he absolutely locked it in and settled down. If you like pitching and you like the art of pitching, both of these veteran guys out there today have been fantastic. Just nibbling at the strike zone, teasing the hitters, throwing off speed and fastball counts, and Derek Lowe getting maybe a little bit of help on occasion. But they're on the strike zone. I mean, if you have pitchers that are consistently around the strike zone, umpires will look for strikes. Ball drilled to right field, and there's Jason Worth catching and rolling for another nice play. I like the defense already. And check out the fastball up in the zone to Martin Prado. First pitch ready to swing. And Jason Worth ready to play defense too. Playing him nice and shallow in right field. And a lot of times as an outfielder, those low line drives, those are the tricky ones. The lights are on today because it's a little bit dark out due to the weather. Jason Worth doing a nice job of positioning himself number one and being ready for the baseball number two. Pre-game Hall of Fame inductee Dominic Dawes would have been proud of that role. Looked very gymnast like on that play good athletic ability by Jason Worth out there 
How about Espinosa to his right? Gobbles it up and throws. Two down. And Adam LaRoche gives such a great stretching target at first base as well. Nice play by Danny Espinosa going to his right up the middle. And you talk about LeVon Hernandez being in the strike zone, retiring all the batters in a row. Well, if you're playing on defense, you're on your toes. You know the, the ball is going to be put into play early in the count. You love to play defense behind guys like LeVon Hernandez. They're throwing strikes. They're keeping you on your toes. They're getting you off the field on a cold day. Great play by Danny Espinosa. And a first pitch strike on the outside corner to Chipper Jones. And I'll tell you this, just walking on the field yesterday for Nats Fest and being out there today for BP, that is one of the best playing surfaces I've ever seen. Interesting that Doug Slayton's getting ready. Pitch count very low for Levon. Here's Zimmerman on a scoop. And there is your 2011 Nationals defense. Ladies and gentlemen, on opening day. and jackets it's cool at the ballpark but you can expect great things with the weekend family fun pack it starts at $14 including a ticket hot dog chips and a coke so it's not just Sundays anymore it's the whole weekend nationals.com slash family for tickets some restrictions apply it's all brought to you by our great friends at Harris Teeter our favorite grocery store here in the DC area Ian Desmond leads off bottom six. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Derek Lowe has fanned six. Walked one. Given the Nats no runs on three hits, but he's approaching 100 pitches. I think I talked about Ian Desmond on our telecast last night from Nats Fest saying, well, he's a leadoff hitter. He'll only lead off one time a game. I nailed that one. He's let off three times today <laughs> for the Nats. Well, somebody else has to get some hits, too. That's a fair ball to Chipper Jones. And Desmond is 0 for 3. Opening day. Nationals Park, Washington, D.C. It's a little hazy in the distance. We can see part of the Capitol Dome. Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo in his Nationals mess and regular season debut. And Debbie Taylor back for her fifth year. 2-0 Braves on an RBI single first inning. Brian McCann. Solo homer in the second, a leadoff shot from Jason Hayward. The Nationals have only three singles. One of them by Jason Worth and the man on deck, Ryan Zimmerman. Braves bullpen busy because of Lowe's pitch count. Eric O'Flaherty is the lefty and a right hander from down under, Peter Moylan. Braves have a good bullpen. Former Oriole, George Sherrill is one of their lefties out there. They have, of course, flame throwing Johnny Venters. Their right handers are Craig Kimbrell, Moylan, Scott Linebrink, and Christian Martinez. 
If you're the Nationals, this is where you have to make your move. Third time around facing Derek Lowe. You've seen everything he has. You've made the adjustments as a hitter, as I talked about before. The opening day jitters are gone. It's just a baseball game now. You've got the heart of the order coming up third time around. It's usually the toughest time for a starting pitcher. Three and one. Jason Worth showed us in spring training. He had a very good batting eye. Took him a while to get the hits and what about three and a half weeks to get the first home run, but he was still getting on base with the walks whenever the pitcher would give that to him. And that ball really boring down and in on him. You watch Derek Lowe when he's good. You could just see guys pounding balls off of their ankles, their shins, the top of their feet. the middle to his left Alex Gonzalez well played two outs FP we were told you're the only guy within a hundred mile radius of Washington who hasn't seen this replay opening night 2008 March 30th Peter Moylan Ryan Zimmerman 2-1 win that was awesome and there's no reason why that can't happen today the Nats hanging around right now just down two to nothing like you said, the Braves do have a great back end of the bullpen with a lot of strong arms. But you never know. Hanging around. Fastball inside to Zimmerman. Ryan a base hit to right. Called third strike on a 3-2 fastball last time. I never get tired of seeing that replay. Seventy eighth home opener in the history of this city for Major League Baseball. The seventh for the Nats. They're one in five in their previous six. Slayton the lefty joined by the familiar delivery of Tyler Clippard. Jim let the bullpen coach the watchful eye. And a two one. Another long count. Derek Lowe's already gone to seven full counts today. And if he throws a strike here that'll add another one. You know Zimmerman is licking his chops here for something he can drive. Anything to get some offense here in the sixth. And he gives him a breaking ball. Eighth full count. Yeah, we talked about that when we showed the highlight package of Levon and Derek Lowe. They're not going to give in. They're not going to throw something right down the middle of the plate. And they're definitely not going to throw something you're looking for. Two crafty veterans right now changing it up. Zimmerman takes one low and he's aboard. Second walk of the day for Derek Lowe. Who last year had better than a two to one strikeout to walk ratio. Freddy Gonzalez may be going to get him right here. Unofficially, he's at 105 pitches. He may not want him facing Adam LaRoche. You would think Eric O'Flaherty will get the call here as Lowe departs after five and two thirds. The Nats touch him for three hits and two walks.
Shield contributes $50 to support the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington. So two walks today, $100 so far. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Walking is good as long as you're not in the ballpark. And you're not a pitcher. Here's O'Flaherty, who pitched in 56 games for the Braves last year with a very good 2.45 ERA. Facing LaRoche. First pitch breaking ball in there. Last year, lefties hit just 231 against O'Flaherty with one home run and 78 at bats. LaRoche has hit the ball in the air twice. Pop up to second, fly ball to left. He gets the call on the inside corner. Mike DeMiro at second, Andy Fletcher at third, Jim Reynolds at first, and veteran Tim Welke, the crew chief behind the plate. And with his head over the right shoulder of that catcher, he's been calling the inside strike to lefties today. Over but low, one and two. Michael Morse. But if LaRoche gets on, Morse will probably be facing Peter Moylan. That is close. And O'Flaherty was walking off the mound thinking he had a strikeout. Well, we've seen that a couple times today. You look at the two strike pitch from O'Flaherty right here to LaRoche, just a slider on the outer half of the plate. Ooh. That, that could have been called strike three. Clearly down, Bob. <laughs> I repeat, could have been called strike three. And now LaRoche gets his first Nationals hit. Two on, two out for Michael Morse. And this will be interesting to see if Freddie Gonzalez does anything else with his bullpen here. His lefty did not get the left-hander out. Yeah, right-handers last year against O'Flaherty hit 229 with one home run and 83 at-bats. So he... Wow. Was effective against right-handers last year as well. Yeah, there's your answer why he's still on the dugout right there. Michael 0 for 2, ground ball to short, and he called third strike today. Second time today the Nats have had two men aboard. That side of the plate is where the strikes are today. Well, this is what you call right man in the right spot for the Nationals. You, know, you talk about the spring train that Michael Morse had, the nine home runs just squaring up balls. All spring long. This is the right guy up. This is the guy you want up in this situation. Morris hits it hard. Gonzalez stabs it at short. Makes a very good play to end the sixth inning. National strand two. They've left five and lost a runner stealing at second base. Two nothing Braves into the late innings. Today, first out of the road with a great play going to his right. And Jason Worth with a nice sliding, rolling play. And then Danny Espinosa up the middle going to center field with a strong arm back across his body. 
More saving, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. And better defense behind Levon and the Nats starters. Look at the economics of pitching here. Sixth inning, ridiculous. And by the way, he only had five pitches last inning because Worth, Espinosa, and Zimmerman all made nice plays. First pitch up the middle. Desmond can't quite get there. He was playing McCann well up the middle. But a hot shot by Brian McCann gets him his second base hit. Levon had retired 15 in a row before this. Yeah, McCann's been aggressive all day. You see Desmond shading him up the middle. If he made that play, it would have been on the second base side. Just a good effort right there, not able to keep it in the infield. If he gloves that play with McCann's wheels, he does have a chance. Oh, yeah. But we see this often when Levon pitches FP as the game goes on. Hitters tend to attack the ball earlier in the count. Just like this 5 4 3 double play. But it's a bang bang at first, and Ugla beat it out. And it's been a while since I've seen Dan Ugla get down the line that fast. That was a bona fide double play ball. And Dan Ugla, in the opinion of Jim Reynolds, beat it. There's a bona fide double play ball because Ryan Zimmerman got the bottom of that big hop. If he lays back on that ball, they have no chance. So a great play by Ryan Zimmerman just starting the double play. Danny Espinoza hanging in there tough with a nice turn. But Dan Ugla hustling down the line, beats it out. I thought they had him. So did Adam LaRoche. And Jim Riggleman doesn't want Levon facing Jason Hayward. So he will pitch one out into the seventh inning. A nice ovation from a big crowd on a cool day in our nation's capital. On opening day, all the pageantry, the pregame fun. Love when the teams line up. And a very good performance by Levon Hernandez. Hadn't given up a hit since the second inning. Six and a third, four hits. Did not walk a batter. Three strikeouts. 77 pitches to get 19 outs. But Jim Riggleman wanted a lefty for Jason Hayward, and here's Doug Slayton. Slayton last year, 49 games. 310 ERA, 41 innings, 36 strikeouts, and 19 walks. 11 games in Syracuse with a zero ERA before the Nats called him up, and he never went back. Two and zero. Especially tough on lefties last year. They hit just 151 off Slayton with no home runs. And I think Jim's probably thinking. Levon went to the well many times with those inside pitches to Hayward. 
to get him out last time after the home run. So he probably figured as a manager. And Steve McCaddy probably chimed in on this. Jason Hayward had seen every pitch Levon had in those two at bats and just just didn't want to go a third time around. With the Braves having a chance to break the game open. Three oh pitch in there and 77 pitches today for Hernandez. You don't want to kill a guy on opening day. So just a nice first start for Levon Hernandez. Great job. He's in the strike zone all day mixing up his pitches. If he pitches like that he'll win a lot of ball games this year for the Nationals. Three one pitch one on one out. Well we asked a question earlier. Did Jason Hayward continue to hit home runs on opening day every year of his career? Did it last year? Here he goes again. That's just a perfect swing right there on a fastball up in the strike zone. Maybe a slider, but nonetheless, up in the strike zone, backspin gets on top of it, and ball is going nowhere on a cold day here in Washington. Of all people, Kaz Matsui did it. 04 and 05. Not exactly a power hitter. Ball four. Two on, one out. First walk issued by Nationals pitching today. Now it's Alex Gonzalez and Jim Riggleman's going to come out and bring in a right hander. That's it for Slayton. Wheels are turning early here on opening day, seventh inning. might be the most unbelievable statistic from next year or last year <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> next year 78 games in 2010 19 decisions for a bullpen pitcher 11 wins eight losses I'd like him to be about five and one in decisions this year <laughs> that was unbelievable he was the leading winner on the staff for a while out of the bullpen He's got good stuff. Fastball 87 and 94. The sharp curveball. He'll throw it at any time. Fastball change up curve. And I like it when you say fastball first. Because there have been times in his young career when he was change up fastball. No curves. If he falls behind with his off speed stuff things can get tough. Alex Gonzalez the hitter. That was first pitch change up. Two on, one out, top seven. He's got a good riding fastball. He does very deceptive. All the elbows and kneecaps, the funky motion that he has makes it tough on a hitter. His changeup looks just like his fastball. I mean, it's a big moment in the game. Tyler Clipper had some struggles in spring training, locked it in late. 
You want to keep the score at 2 nothing. You want to keep it right there. Give your team a chance with one swing of the bat. And a big part of the ball game. During an Nats extra after the game, Johnny Holiday likes to talk about defining moments. We may be arriving at one here in the seventh inning one way or the other. That ball's off the hitter's leg. And a foul ball as it rolled fair to Zimmerman. Strike two. Good pitch right there. Fastball in the inner half of the plate, not giving Gonzalez a chance to get his hands out. Setting him up now with two strikes. You can go with a slider away. You can mix in a changeup, or you can double up even with the fastball inside. Good riding fastball. We've seen a lot of those from Derek Lowe today. Tyler Clifford showing you he has one, too. Ruth Chris on the pitch track, where sizzling stakes are part of a memorable experience. We'll try to keep it to sizzling fastballs when Ruth Chris has the pitch track. That was a good one. One ball and two strikes. Two on, one out, top of the seventh. He's getting loose. That one in the low 90s. Look at that bullpen. Top four in the league. Opponents only hitting 236. Lots of wins. Clipper had 11 of those 27. And Matt Caps, of course, had the majority of saves before going on to Minnesota. Good pitch again. Three fastballs on the inner half of the plate. Pudge and Tyler Clipper liking what they're seeing on the swing from Alex Gonzalez. Not getting the hands out on the fastball in. The last thing you want to do as a pitcher right here is speed up somebody's bat. It's a cold day. It's hard to get the hands out. You see the fastballs on the inner half of the plate. And if a guy's late on a fastball, you never want to speed up his bat with an off-speed pitch. 2-2, two, two, two on. Off-speed, he looked it all the way in. You have your number eight hitter on deck. Then the pitcher's spot. How frisky would Freddie Gonzalez get with his base runners here? On a 3-2 pitch with one out, you could run yourself out of an inning. They are holding on a strikeout. And Clipper gets a big one for the second out here in the seventh. That's just a great sequence there by Pudge Rodriguez and Tyler Clifford setting up the 3-2 changeup. They made Alex Gonzalez aware of the fastball in as a hitter. You see a crispy fastball in the inner half of the plate and you're late to it. Sometimes you got to cheat to get there. You got to start early. And the last pitch that Gonzalez was looking for right there was the changeup. So he was aware of the fastball early in the count on the inner half of the plate. Made him swing through that 3-2 changeup. Here's Freddie Freeman 0 for 2. Freeman got 24 big league at bats last year. Asking for time and getting it. He hit a buck 67 with four hits in those 24 ABs. Bud's getting together with Clippard. They just keep on producing them out of that Atlanta farm system, don't they? They always have. One of the better farm systems in the history of baseball. They do a great job of, of developing young players and this is switch hitting Brooks Conrad. Faro Flaherty, who got a big out on Michael Morse with two men aboard. This ball playable left field side. Out goes Desmond, in comes Morse, and the Nats will take it to the seventh inning stretch. Pitchers are doing the job right now, need some offense. Time to stretch on opening day. Clippard gets.
7th coming up, the cherry blossoms are starting to bloom here in our nation's capital. Cool day for opening day, but really good pitching. Levon was fantastic. A couple of early hiccups a little bit with the chipper double and the Hayward home run, but just untouchable after that. Yeah, he really got into his groove in the third inning. Levon Hernandez just doing what he does best, mixing it up, throwing a lot of strikes. Uh, did a fantastic job, but Derek Lowe was his equal out there today. Great stuff by him, too. And the bullpen picks it up. Doug Slayton walks his only man, but Clippard gets a big out. It's all about, with the bullpen, situations and getting outs when you need them. Yeah, sometimes the bullpen, it's, it's not all about protecting a lead. It's keeping the game where it is when you come in and you're behind. So right now the Nats are in a good spot. You know, they got a couple more outs to deal with here, and they're right in this ballgame. They're into the Atlanta bullpen. Some offense needed. Uh, Derek Lowe was pretty good. I mean, his stuff was moving all over the place today, and he had a really good breaking ball to right-handed hitters. Yeah, we talked about it early in the game. A lot of times in cold weather, when it's cold and dry, the pitchers don't get a feel for the baseball. But with the humidity in the air today, obviously Derek Lowe had a good feel for the baseball. He had a good grip on as you can see his stuff was moving all over the place just a great professional outing by both starters today no president to throw out the first pitch like we had last year but down through the years it's been great coolidge hoover fdr i love the initials jfk and there's schubert h humphrey right behind him of course lyndon johnson lbj that's probably the best arm we've seen. And, of course, our 44th president, Barack Obama, visiting with us on opening day last year up here in the booth. What a thrill that was for us after he threw out first pitch. He just had to put on the White Sox cap. We kidded him about that. But it was great to have a sitting president at the ballpark, and we were honored to do so. Bottom seven coming up. Eric O'Flaherty, by the way, still in the game. Screech has him going out in the outfield and hopefully some base hits about to happen here as Ann Keel leads off. And just great ceremonies today. Great pregame festivities. The Nationals did a fantastic job for opening day. You see all the dignitaries here, all the military presence. Just fun to be a part of this whole thing. You'll Time coffee will come in shortly. The only unfortunate thing is there's a flyover schedule by the F-16s, but I guess the ceiling was a little bit low. We didn't see those guys scream over the ballpark, but just a great day in general. You're wondering if you get this game in. Yeah, the weather has at least stayed dry, but FP's neighbors over there in Crystal City, hopefully we'll see them sometime soon, screaming over the top of our stadium in those fighter jets. Here's Rick Ankeel. 0 for 1 with a walk. O'Flaherty with a fastball tailing to the inside corner. Seventh inning, bottom half underway. That's yeah, a hard-breaking ball that misses. They're in the sixth inning now at Yankee Stadium. Tigers and the Yankees tied at three. Espinosa then Pudge to follow here in the seventh. And the Brewers lead 4-1 early at Cincinnati. Those are the only other two ball games in progress. Kind of an unusual opening day with only six games. Everybody else gets after it tomorrow. One quirk about the schedule was Milwaukee with a dome opens on the road. Warm weather San Diego opens on the road. Warm weather Angels open on the road. I'd just like to see all the games on one day. Put all opening day games on the same day. Have everybody open up and make it be an event. Yeah. A holiday. And Keo flies one to left. Easy for Martin Prado. Nationals and their fans teaming up to help the earthquake and tsunami victims in Japan. The Nats are donating 50% of the proceeds from tickets sold in select sections to this weekend series against the Braves. Those tickets have been discounted to $10 with $5 per ticket going to the relief effort. It's never been easier to give back. Visit nationals.com slash Japan aid and to find out how you can see a ball game at a great price and help out our friends in the Far East. Here's Danny Espinosa, one for two. Batting right-handed for the first time. That ball is well hit to the gap in left center. It is on the ground. It is on the track. 
up against the wall. And the Nationals have their first 2011 extra base hit. And Danny Espinosa, two for three. I'm going to watch him a little bit in spring training. Seemed like he had more pop from the right-handed side of the play. Just a great job of going down and getting that baseball. And we said the ball isn't flying today. It's not carrying with the cold weather and the humidity. I mean, you talk about this game, hanging around. It's a bloop and a blast away right there. Danny Espinosa, nice job of getting on base and setting the table for Pudge Rodriguez. And Freddy Gonzalez sure is not shy about letting O'Flaherty face right-handed batters with men on base. He got Morris last inning with two aboard, and he leaves him in to face Pudge here. Who goes up hacking. Nationals will be hitting in a moment for Clippard. With their veteran Jerry Hairston Jr. Who will fulfill a bunch of different roles on this ball club. I can't wait to see this veteran bench operating. And of course Freddie has Peter Moylan ready for that. And Riggleman has Matt Stairs ready for him. Gary Hairston loves to play shortstop, but he'll play anywhere he needs to get into the game. A one one pitch to Pudge. He got jammed on that breaking ball. Three one on the out Freeman to the pitcher. And at third base with two outs. Is Espinosa. For Hairston coming in. Day off tomorrow. Back with you for a day game Saturday. Nats extra 1230 with Johnny and Ray. And then Tommy Hansen and John Lannon. Number 15, Jerry Hairston. Jerry Hairston Jr. will not be around long. He's been announced. The Braves will change pitchers. And then we'll see if. Jim Ruggeman makes another move, possibly Matt Stairs, Lance Nix. We'll see. Seventh inning wheels turn. It will not be Matt Stairs just yet. It'll be Lance Nix who gets the call here. Lance Nix against Peter Moylan. Moylan, of course, the side winding right hander, appeared in 85 games for the Braves and 172 in the last two years. One of the busiest relievers in baseball. Lance Nix is a well traveled major league veteran, a native of the Dallas area. That's what he did with the Reds last year. Big, strong, to say the least, chiseled 
Left-handed batter. He's a former high school quarterback. And the Nationals will employ their first pinch hitter of the year after he replaces Hairston. First pitch change up by Moylan outside. We talked to Lance Nix yesterday in his locker. So happy to be part of this organization and a part of this ball club. Talked about his experience in Cincinnati last year. He said he's addicted to winning. It was a great season. He loved that feel and that vibe. And he thinks that the Nationals can do the same this year. I mean, truly excited talking to about him, talking about the team this year in his locker yesterday, just saying, hey, FP, this is a great bunch of guys we got here. They've all won wherever they've been. We got veteran presence on the bench. We know how to stay ready. We know how to stay prepared. We just love to have a guy that's happy to be a part of the ball club and just wants to contribute any way he can. Big fastball, couldn't reach it. Grew up a Texas Rangers fan in the... Dallas-Fort Worth area. He don't, doesn't get cheated at the plate. No, you can't sit around for seven innings, walk up to the plate and get cheated. The one thing you want to do is get your hacks in. You see that from Latin Nick's right there. Just let it fly. One ball, two strikes. And Moylan strikes him out on a pitch upstairs. Nationals have had some chances. They've stranded six runners today. Two-nothing Braves into the eighth. Red porch jam-packed today. On to the eighth inning, 2 nothing. A full season of action here at the ballpark. And how about the all-inclusive power pack ticket? Starting at $25, this season-long plan offers parking, food, and drink. Stop by nationals.com slash power pack to find out more. Some restrictions apply. Todd Coffey takes over. This man will be an interesting addition to the pitching staff. He's been durable. 147 games his last two years with Milwaukee. Started his career in the big leagues six years ago now with the Reds in 05. Yeah, fastball, slider, occasional split. Fastball sit around 94 miles an hour. Signed with the Nats on January 19th. And we had him at the Nats Fest yesterday for a little Q&A, and I asked him all his nicknames. I said, I got one for you. Do you mind if I use it on the air? He said, what is it? I said, big pot. So I'm going with Big Pot right now is on the hill for the Nationals. Big Pot of Coffee. And by the way, the Braves version of Matt Stairs steps in. Left-handed hitting slugger Eric Hinsky. Look at those pinch hitting. Or rather, overall numbers from last year as he appears as a pinch hitter here in the eighth inning. But a guy with lots of pop off the bench. Lots of pops. Lots of big hits for the Braves over the years. Lots of Walk off Jacks. He's got a lot of power. He knows what he's doing. A guy that was a highly touted rookie and prospect in the A's organization. I played with him in 2000 in Sacramento, Triple A. Just a great guy. And he stuck around for a long time because he can hit off the bench. Good career numbers. Anything over 250 as a pinch hitter is very good. 
The bat is foul. The ball is fair to shortstop. Desmond a wide throw to LaRoche. One out. That'll make you feel good if you're Todd Coffey coming in. Your first appearance as a national and you get some wood. You get some lumber. A little 6-3 to three put out. Maybe relax a little bit out there. He said he runs in from the bullpen. He sprints in just to kind of get all that adrenaline out of his system. So when he takes yeah. the mound, he's nice and relaxed. He said the first time he ever did it in the minor leagues, he, it, he just liked the way it felt. And then he's got to dial it back a little bit by the time he gets to the mound. But aren't you the one in spring training that said these relievers are adrenaline junkies? And they live off that. Yep. Top of the eighth. Nine hits in the game, five by the Nats, but the Braves lead 2 0. Off the end of the bat, right side for LaRoche. Nationals pitching continues to do well. Stay tuned after Nats Extra. Even more Nationals opening day coverage. The debut of the Mid Atlantic Sports Report. Tom Davis, Phil Wood, Dave Johnson, Mel Antonin. The guys will take a closer look at the new look Nats and look ahead to everything competing with them in the National League East. Everybody I've talked to with this Atlanta organization thinks their team is just about as good as the Phillies. Sean Burnett warming for the Nats. The Phillies, of course, have the big four, the incomparable four in their starting rotation. With the Braves feel that Hudson, Lowe, and Tommy Hansen with some Jurgens and Brandon Beachy sprinkled in can compete with those guys. And a little Venters and Kimbrell on the back end throwing some serious heat and shortening the game up. You know, with all due respect to the fans in San Francisco and Philadelphia, I think this may be one of the best teams in the National League. No, oh, I don't think you're out on a limb on that one at all. They're good. Good lineup. If Chipper's healthy, that's huge for them. They've added Ugla. Hayward's not a rookie anymore. Freeman, great glove at first. And you can't have an all-star at every position. Nobody can afford that. But you look at some of the other guys. Alex Gonzalez, a shortstop who's very reliable. McCann is an all-star. But they need Nate McClough to be twice as good as he was last year because he had a horrible year. Chipper, McCann, they're the nucleus. In the air to left. Michael Morse is under it, and this game is going into the bottom of the eighth inning. That's the bottom of it. Here's the top of it. Desmond, Worth, and Zimmerman, top of the order, straight ahead. Those are the caps on the right that were given out today here at the ballpark. Tough day to be a fan. Nats and their fans teaming up to help the earthquake and tsunami victims in Japan. 50% of certain tickets sold in select sections this weekend will be donated. And some of those tickets have been discounted down to $10. So $5 per ticket goes to the relief effort. 
It's never been easier to get back. Go to nationals.com slash Japan Aid and find out how you can see a game at a great price and help out our friends in Japan who need our help right now. Left-hander Johnny Venters, and he can bring it. In the 79 games last year, 195 ERA, 93 strikeouts, and just 83 innings pitch. His fastball's in the mid-90s, got a good slider to go with it. Mm. But sometimes if you're a hitter and you face a guy like Derek Lowe and the stuff's moving all over the place all day, he'll take straight in 95. Desmond, left side chipper, and Ian Desmond's 0 for 4. Every one of those times, oddly enough, has been leading off an inning today. Doesn't happen very often. Next up will be Worth and then Zimmerman against the fireballing lefty who walked 39 batters in 83 innings. But when you've struck out 93, that's way better than a 2-1. to one. Jason Worth is one for three. Base it up the middle in his first at bat. Strikeout in the third swinging. Ground ball to short in the sixth. Ninety three on that heater. He works from the third base side of the rubber. Zimmerman has singled and walked today. And it's two and one now to Jason Worth. If you're Jason Worth, you're just trying to get on base any way you can right here. Set the table for the big boys. Worth out to short. Gonzalez has to go to the backhand side. That's a good pick by Freddie Freeman for the second out. And that's the second pick the rookie has made over there today. I don't think a lot of people realize how fast Jason Worth is hitting that ball in the shortstop off the bat. I thought he had a good chance to beat this out, but just a nice play by Alex Gonzalez on the front end and a better play by Freddie Freeman on the back end. We talked earlier in the game about Freddie Freeman and his defense. The Braves people just raving about his glove at first base, and that's a tough pick. That's the short in-between hop right there. He just goes out and gets it. And Jim Reynolds made the right call. Now Zimmerman to chipper, and this game ground balls its way into the ninth inning. Quite a pitching matchup by both clubs today. 2-0 Atlanta. Matching up nicely. A homer by Hayward, an RBI earlier by McCann. So let's have a look at our Ford dealer's drive of the game. And it was Jason Hayward in the second inning just getting on top of a high slider from LeVon Hernandez. A little backspin action to the right center field gap. The big part of the ballpark. I was wondering when I got here today, seeing the mist and the rain and the cold temperatures, if anybody was going to hit a home run. But when you need to knock down two iron like that, they're going to get out of most ballparks. Sean Burnett. Fantastic season last year. Got himself a new contract. 
A 2-1-4 ERA in 73 games. A good fastball, 86 to 93. Good curveball. Nasty changeup. Probably his best pitch. Here's Chipper, top of the ninth. Jones is one for three with a double and a run scored. They got the Braves their run in the first when Brian McCann singled him home. Those hits both came with two outs. First to right handed AB for Chipper today. He's two for four. Is he back? We'll find out in a couple of months. After two tough seasons. You're going to find out if he can handle it for 162 games. Told me he's perfectly healthy. His knee feels great. I wouldn't expect him to say anything else, though. You want to you know, keep that state of mind going into a baseball season. But just a nice swing by Chipper Jones. Not trying to do too much. Going right back up the middle. You know, knees are pretty big in this division. Chipper appears to be okay. But they're still concerned about Carlos Beltran up there in New York. Chipper, by the way, will be 39 on April 24th. Beltron played very little in spring baseball for the Mets. Evidently, Jose Reyes is feeling fine. Here's Brian McCann. He's two for three. So the Braves, three, four hitters are four for seven today. Nice opening day crowd here at Nationals Park. The Nats are one in five all time in season openers. The only win three years ago against the Braves here. Bob Carpenter, F.P. Santangelo, Debbie Taylor. And of course, Johnny and Ray are on the way with Nats extra in just a little while. That breaking ball way outside on an 0-2 pitch. Chad Godin. One and two to McCann. He waits for the breaking ball and hits it straight back. Dan Ugla. Oh, for three so far in his Braves debut. Be nice to see if Sean Burnett can coax a ground ball here from Brian McCann and then get Chad Godin set up to face Ugla. Or you might leave Sean Burnett in if Burnett gets out of this. Yeah, the fact that Godin is still warming indicates it might be the former, not the latter. But that may depend on whether there's anybody on base. Hits are even at five apiece. Braves on top, 2 nothing. top of the ninth. A reminder, we'll be back with you, 12.30, Nats Extra Saturday, 105 first pitch. John Lennon, Tommy Hansen. after tomorrow's off day. There's the grounder. And there's the relay by Desmond, 1-6-3. Burnett didn't give him a great feed, but Desmond's so athletic out there at short. And the Nats turn their first double play of the year. They turned 148 last year, seventh in the league. Great job of Burnett knowing his base runner, taking his time right here, knowing it's Brian McCann at the plate, and Ian Desmond on the back end, knowing the same thing. You know, part of making the plays on defense is knowing the situation. If you got a guy that doesn't run fast, you can take your time and make the play, and Sean Burnett's fired up. That's the ground ball he was looking for. Braves are warming up their closer. And Burnett will be doing some closing for the Nats this year. One ball, one strike to Dan Ugla.
Wood jacks one to left. Hooking foul into the corner. I think he got that one off the end of that. The bat might have broken it right there. Good pitch by Burnett, keeping it down on the strike zone. I'll go a little quick on it. He's got it right off the end of the bat. And check out the swing of Dan Ugla. Yeah, just a little out in front of that ball. Maybe a little too geared up ahead in the count. We'll grab a new bat and try again. Curtis Granderson is homered for the Yankees. Bottom of the seventh against his old teammates. And the Yanks lead the Tigers 4-3. to three. Nothing has changed in Cincinnati. Milwaukee 4-1. Fourth inning there. And here in Washington, top of the ninth. Bases empty, two outs. Ugla on a 2-2 pitch. Right off the end of that bat. Good pitch right there on the outer half. Ugla looking for it inside again. It flew open right there. Now if you're Burnett, you got a lot of options. You go back in, you can drop that nasty curveball you have. You change up. All three pitches are open right here. I like making the big guys beat me the other way. Throw it away, let them hit it as far as they want. Ah, big breaking ball gets him. Sean Burnett with a scoreless ninth. Four, LaRoche. Five, Morris, and number six, and Keel. Coming up. Match are down 2 nothing. Both ball clubs only five hits in this game this afternoon. Season opener for the Braves and for the Nationals here at Nats Park. Johnny Holiday, the Silver Fox, a Frosty Fox, I might add. Ray frosty. Knight. But Atlanta's been able to take advantage of their five hits to put two runs on the board. They've always been that kind of ball club. Uh, Chipper gets the base hit. McCann drives a big run in. Home run by... Uh, Hayward. Hayward and, uh, you know, good pitching all the way around. Cold days, you don't expect very many runs, and there certainly haven't been many. Are you surprised the kind of defense we've seen today from some of these Nationals worth LaRoche? I kind of expected it. I, I really did. LaRoche has always been a great player, and those two young men up the middle, uh, worth that one of the reasons we acquired him, not just for his bat, but his great defensive play. Well, let's hope we have a Nationals win we can talk about when we come back after this bottom of the ninth inning. Let's go back upstairs to Bob and F.P. Santangelo. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ray. And we're looking forward to Nats Extra from you guys all season long. And looking forward to trying to do something against this fireballer, Craig Kimbrell. One major league save. He had 23 saves at Triple A Gwinnett last year. And the Braves are turning over a very important job to a 22 year old young man. He won't be 23 until the end of May. Third rounder three years ago in the draft. And here's LaRoche. Adams one for three, fastball upstairs. Yeah, 20, 94. 21 games for the Braves last year. An 044 ERA fastball in the mid to high 90s. Struck out 40, walked 16 in those 20 and two thirds. Are you kidding me? 40? Well, that just means he's due. Man. He's from Huntsville, Alabama. Two and one. I like the matchups here in the ninth inning for the Nationals. LaRoche trying to get on base. For Michael Morris, who hit the nine home runs in spring training. Three and one. Professional at bat working right now. And of course, any base runner gets the time to run in the box. Right.
right in there, three and two. Veteran LaRoche taking all the way. Our copyrighted telecast today presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. 3-2, bottom nine. LaRoche in the air to left. Overpowered by the right-hander. Prado for the first out. Michael Morse is 0 for 3 today. And then Ankiel. 0 for 2 with a walk. First pitch breaking ball. Michael Morris, you're going up there looking for 95, 96. You get a couple of hammers early in the count. Not something you're looking for, not something you want to offer at until you get two strikes. He saw a heater. 97 on that foul tip. 97, and it wasn't straight. Did you see the tailing action at the end of that fastball? It's one thing to throw 97, 98, but when you have movement on it, 51 career minor league saves for Kimbrell. He's been a closer right from the start of his professional career. 1-2 pitch. Little bit outside. A little 1-2 fastball on the outer half of the plate and it stays out there. Clearly a ball, Bob. That could have been called. Strike three. Mike lives to fight another pitch. And now another. That's where you shorten up a little bit. Michael Morris has all the power in the world. But if you're not the tying run, you're just trying to get on base any way you can. Maybe early in the count you're looking to drive the ball right now, but here you just spread out a little bit, think the other way, cover the fastball, which you have to respect at 97. Morris is gone on a fastball up and in. It's a fastball like the second strike, a tailing fastball in the inner half of the plate. Look at that thing just have the extra gear and take off on Michael Morris. Just a little bit late right there, as most hitters will be on 97 98. That's down to their final out and keel up. Two fly balls around the walk. Atlanta trying to pitch a shutout with five different pitchers on opening day. I mean, this is this is a tough assignment for the Nationals right out of the gate. You have one of the best teams of the National League with one of the best staffs. And I, I know the, the Giants last year when they played the Braves in the playoffs. Now, all the players for San Francisco were talking about, we didn't even want to knock out the starting pitcher. We didn't want to face the bullpen because <laughs> these guys had such electric arms. Yeah. One of the only cases in baseball, maybe one of the only teams where, you know, you work real hard to get the starter out of there, and then you bring in young kids throwing 97, 98 in the back end of the bullpen. Two and one to Ankiel Espinosa next if the nine inning continues. And now the Nats are down to their final strike. Espinosa's had a good day with a base hit and a double. That's it. In just over two and a half hours, the Atlanta Braves shut out the Nationals 2-0 on opening day. And the kind of pitching, FP, 
the Nats were expecting from Atlanta, not necessarily hoping for it, but they saw some great arms today. They did. They saw a great performance from Derek Lowe. A equally great performance, I thought, by LeVon Hernandez. Only made one real mistake, a fastball up to Jason Hayward that he hit out of the ballpark. But the Nats' bullpen did a good job. The Braves' bullpen did a good job. And you'll see that this time of year. Usually the pitchers are ahead of the hitters. Two hours and 32 minutes. That's FP. I'm Bob Carpenter. And for Debbie Taylor, so long from National Spark. Braves win at 2 nothing. We're on Masson HD against the Braves 1 o'clock Saturday. This has been a presentation of Masson. Nats Extra, Johnny and Ray coming your way right now.